So you want to do seal rows because of the amazing stimulus to fatigue and the lack of overall lower back tightness that you get from it. But you're either training at a commercial gym that has no seal row bench or a way to set up seal rows, or you're training at home where you either have no space for a seal row bench or you have no funds to buy one. They're quite expensive, being very frank. So you're stuck. You're doing pull-ups. You're doing pull-downs. Maybe you can afford a pulley system. Those are pretty cheap. But you're still wanting to do that horizontal row. That's where my Coach Butler patented seal row DIY setup comes into play. So you get yourself a tall plyo box. I'm using 30 inches. I'm 5 foot 11. I have long monkey arms. Adjust your grip width as needed depending upon how tall you are, how long your arms are. But this is the cheapest way, the most cost effective way to do seal rows either in your home gym or at your commercial gym. Now, as you can see with variation, you can do this same exercise multiple times a week if you delineate how you orient your arms at the top of the concentric. Track back to my final answer on bodybuilding video. What's something that I told you? What muscles get influenced or biased depends upon where your arm ends up in terms of its relation to your torso. So if it's out, that's upper back and rear delts. If it's in, that's lats. And if it's in between, it's a blend of everything. And of course, the range of motion is fantastic because you don't have a seal row bench that blocks the bar from hitting your chest. But there's something that we have to talk about relating to safety as well. Now, as you saw, what did I do? I moved up so that I would have clearance to be able to move my arms freely. That's the first thing. But the most important thing, as you can see here, is that I'm bracing very hard in between each rep. Not only am I bracing hard, and this is somewhat the fault of the name of the movement, but it's not really a chest supported row. You should be sitting on your abs, somewhat sitting like in a banana shape almost, where your core is fully engaged and fully braced. A lot of people, newer lifters, when they do the seal row, they report back to me with things like, I don't know how it happened, but somehow I hurt my chest or I hurt my ribs doing this. You have, just like this with the squat, you have to use your support musculature. You never want to have anything supported by bone unless it's your wrist where it's designed for that. All of that safety nerdy shit out the way, you're left with a variation that gives you a lot of bang for your buck. There's a lot of ways that you could do this movement. So you can do it with a long squeeze at the top. You can do it with a slow eccentric. You can do it with both. You can vary your grip width. You can vary the angle that your arm points. There's a lot of different ways that you could program this lift. So if you're stuck in a home gym or you just prefer to train in a home gym, you can use this same family of movements on each of your days where you do a back exercise and not have any overuse injuries and also build your body and your back very robustly as well. Now, Obviously, if you have access to a pull up bar or any sort of pull down system where you can do your vertical pulls, I still want you to include those in your program as well, mostly for the shoulder health benefit. So track back to this video or check this video out if you haven't seen it. It's a lecture on shoulder health. I talk about how you should include some form of overhead pressing along with your horizontal pressing just to keep your shoulder integrity in check. Same line of logic with your vertical pulls and your horizontal pulls. One final word, and then you guys give me any questions that you have. Use my four sets of eight simple progression method. You do a top set, you calculate your back downs in the middle of the workout, easy as pie. Y'all be easy.